So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us and taking the time out of your busy day to, to come along to the session. We really appreciate it. And we're going to be talking about labour market information today and understanding and digesting labour market information. Um, and we'll also be looking at skills and skills strategies as well. I'm um, very, really happy to be joined by resident expert Caroline, if you don't mind introducing yourself, Caroline. Mm -hmm. Uh, hello everyone. Yes, I'm Caroline Cartwright and I'm the um, Hertfordshire Let Skills and Employment Manager. Thanks, Caroline. And Caroline will be taking a big part of today's session, which we're look, really looking forward to hearing about all that great information around HOP and other things. But just wanted to kind of focus everyone's attention in today about labour market information. So hopefully we'll start to demystify the jobs market a little bit, um, help young people because it's quite confusing um, when it comes to looking at labour market information and how they can kind of get that down to job hunting and finding out different bits of information about jobs, uh, growth sectors, what skills are needed in jobs and things like that. But LMI is an increasingly valuable tool and helps um, young people um, when it comes to them thinking about what they want to do next through that kind of research. But also it helps teachers to know about it and parents that are supporting them as well. Um, I find that labour market information can be useful, really, uh, like really, really invaluable in schools and colleges, um, particularly when it when it comes to maybe trying to get students to investigate what they would like to do in the future. They can look at jobs, families, and they can research different job sectors. And then when they are refining down, they can find actual jobs that maybe interest them. And then that can help them motiv motivate them when it comes to their actual lesson time their attendance, their work experience, placements, etc. Um, so I think it's invaluable information. It helps them think about all different elements of employment. Um, and there's some great tools out there which we'll showcase today. Uh, loads of different resources on HOP around labour market information. Things like the Careerometer um, on Careers Map and LMI for All, where people and students and parents can do loads and loads of research around the job sector market. Um, we've also obviously got Caroline on the call and she'll be able to cover some great information around HOP as well um, and, and really hopefully get students that sort of clearer understanding of HOP, which is labour market and growth sectors, but also about the different options such as apprenticeships, further education, but then also what skills they're going to need in, in the future jobs markets. So the main objectives of today's workshop really is to understand um, Gatsby Benchmark 2. And I'll go through that and dissect it a little bit and give a few little hints and tips around Gatsby Benchmark 2. We'll look at the labour market information and the various different resources out there. Um, Caroline will go through HOP, but also look at things like employer and skills strategies and dashboards. Um, and then we'll hopefully tee you up with some resources um, that you can use with the students and with parents and with the teachers. Um, and then what we will also do is have a bit of time for some discussion as well and find out and share best practice of what people are doing um, and share that amongst the group. So you can see how the session breaks down. The first bit is around Gatsby Benchmark 2. Then Caroline will talk about priority sectors, skills, skills gaps, growth sectors, et cetera, a bit about destinations. We'll go through those resources. Um, some of these you, you'll have maybe seen before and other things will be brand new. Um, and we'll also hear from other people as well about what resources they use and what things they think is great to share. Um, and then we'll go in and think about what, what could you do in your school or college? What do you do already? And um, a really, really key bit of information that I'm glad Caroline raised is what's missing? What could we work on next or what could we pull together as a careers hub, et cetera? Um, to, to, to do better or to work on next. So great to have you all on the call. I uh, really appreciate everybody muting in between the speakers, but then please do feel free to get involved in the session. So switch your camera on a bit later on, ask some questions after Caroline's section uh, and get involved in the discussions a bit later on as well. But thank you very much for joining us. So Obviously, when, when it comes to this piece of work, we always do focus on the Gatsby benchmarks. Today's is focusing on Gatsby benchmark two, learning from careers and labour market information. There's different people on the call, people that are brand new into post, other people that have been doing this for a number of years. But I think a great resource is to go onto the careers and enterprise resource directory around the Gatsby benchmarks. And then particularly around today's session, you could look at Gatsby benchmark two resources. 
Um, so I'd just advise people to put aside a bit of time to have a look at that. When it comes to this specific benchmark, what we're aiming for here is by the age of 14, all pupils should have had access to information around the labour market and different career pathways, particularly around STEM as well. Um, and during their study programmes, they should access information around all careers, paths and labour market to help with their decision making, but also the parents should have access to that information as well. So what does that look like? Well, by the age of 14 is kind of that year nine when they're looking at their GCSE options. So it's great to jump on things like HOP to research the different job families and give, give job scores out of 10 um, of interest, then read the ones that are getting the highest scores. So then when they do eventually go to a careers appointment um, or they're considering their GCSE options, um, students are making informed choices and, and not shutting any doors. So, for example, needing triple science would be advisable to become uh, anything in the medical profession, for example. So it, it's, it's giving them that quality information to help to make informed choices, but supported by their teachers and supported by their parents. There's a few different ways um, you can look at that. Um, you've got the IAG appointments in school by careers advisors and personal advisors. Um, year nine is not always a year group where everybody gets a careers appointment, but you could do some targeted support where you're helping special needs students, students in care, uh, pupil premium or free school meal students. So they're getting some extra appointments and some extra support around their GCSE options and giving them that labour market information and, and information about courses and choices. We've got on the HOP website, the labour market video and the posters and infographics. I've seen in schools those being used on websites and um, I've seen them being in newsletters shared with parents via social media. Um, and I've also seen them referred to at parents' evenings as well. Um, talks at parents' evenings can sometimes talk about local labour market and the different options. Um, and I've also seen information shared around destinations data, but also linking it into labour market as well, which has been quite interesting. All of these resources we will go into a bit later on after Caroline's section. So, um, and we're also really, really interested to hear from you guys on, on, on the shop floor as to what you found useful, what you've used, and again, what's missing. So what we could work on and develop to help you. Um, but there's a great widget tool that, that not everybody knows about, um, which is on two different areas. You can either get it on Career Map or you can get it on LMI for all, both for free. Um, and we'll show that widget a bit later, but it gives some great interactive um, labour market information, um, demographics and, and info that, that students and teachers and parents can type into and find out so they could look at nurse and see what the average wage is for that, but then they could compare that to the national average of all salaries. Um, but we'll show you all of those resources a bit later. So it's, I'd say it's one of the benchmarks where if you're trying to hit your eight Gatsby benchmarks and you may be, you're new to the role, you're not quite sure where to start, Gatsby benchmark two is a great benchmark to start with because if you work through some of the things um, that we're talking about here and we'll share as well in best practice, it can be one of the quicker, easier wins to hit as 100% as a Gatsby benchmark. So if you're sort of scratching your head, looking at the, looking up at Everest and you're brand new in role as a careers leader or as an EA and you're not quite sure where your school's going to go or where your college is going to go, I think Gatsby benchmark two is a good one. Um, also, you can involve your enterprise advisor. They'll come from a particular sector so they can give some talks and, and labour market information specific to their own sector as well. So it's a great starting point is Gatsby Benchmark 2, and it's a great one to try and get 100% um, as soon as you can. So Caroline, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, feel free to, to trigger when you want me to go on to the next slides, if that's okay. Thank you for joining us, Caroline. Really appreciate it. Lovely, Steve. Thank you. Right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yep. Uh, so as I'm Caroline Cartwright, Skills and Employment Manager at the Local Enterprise Partnership. Um, so what I thought I'd do is that give a bit of an explanation of what the role of the LEP Skills Managers does first, because we are immersed in, in data and policy and government skills and careers agenda. And it'd be quite useful to, for you to understand what our role is and 
and how we articulate all the data that we see and translate that into on the ground plans. So, uh, so every region, every local enterprise region has uh, what's called a skills manager. Sometimes we have different jobs titles, but, but thereabouts with skills and employment managers. So bear in mind, I'm Hertfordshire. So I live and breathe Hertfordshire. Everything I do is about Hertfordshire and our economic growth. However, a lot of you, of course, your, your students are working and will go across borders. They might come in from cross borders. We've got, we want to, so there's one of me in, in Essex, for example, one of me up in Bedfordshire. So it's important that you, if you're on those borders, actually you can access exactly the same work and such the information I'm talking about across, across um, into other counties. Uh, but what we do is we lead and coordinate this, uh, the work of something called the Skills Advisory Panel. So I'm going to go on, the, don't go to the next slide yet, but on the next slide explains it in a bit more detail. But this is something that Department for Education has set up um, to enable each region to really understand uh, their opportunities and their challenges within skills and careers. Um, we do a huge amount of work in data. Uh, we're not necessarily the data experts in terms of that scientific side of it, or the manipulating and um, searching and, and how it's presented, but I work with data all day, every day, and we, we have a team of people in Harpsh County Council who we work with in their data science team, who is taking that data from all hundreds of different sources and trying to um, put it into much more readable uh, formats. We do a lot of work in data, um, partnership work, huge. So all that data comes in and then we're working across all of our partners, schools, FE, HE, business, local authorities, department of work in pensions. So all those partners that are working within skills and employment. And then finally, all the data, all the partnership work, all the funding, all culminates in our strategy and our action plan. So we're responsible for taking all that information, all that data about labour market and actually putting down what are we going to do in Hertfordshire about ensuring our residents are meeting the needs of our employers and, and that we're providing our employers with that, that pipeline. So I just want to give you a bit of an overview of, of the role. I have quite a nice role in um, the LEP because I have this strategic policy side, but I actually lead on Hertfordshire Opportunities Portal as well. So it just means I can translate all this information into real practical tools for our residents and our employers and our careers education sector to use that's really sort of valuable to be sort of on both sides of uh, the coin um so yeah that's um what our role is i want to give you a bit more of an overview of the sap skills advisory panel work now if you are so inclined and you're up for reading 80 page sometimes larger documents you could absolutely immerse yourself in in the data uh, the labour market information but we don't want you to do that but please do that what we need to do myself and Steve and um, all those that work in the careers and enterprise companies translate that into meaningful um, information for you some visual information and practical information but I just wanted to give you a bit of context as to where it all comes from so as I said the Department for Education do provide us with some funding to do this um, funding which enables us to provide some leadership around skills and employment and workforce challenges. Um, we have a skills advisory panel, um, which everyone can engage with. We have 20 people on that, about 20 people on that panel, which is a mix of um, education and employers, uh, training providers, government. Um, but we do engage probably around quarterly with webinars, for example, talking about the latest um, government policy, for example, in skills or careers. Um, so, yeah, we have a panel and they oversee all the main skills programmes and careers programmes across Hertfordshire. And their role is really to work together to ensure that our programmes are meeting the needs of our employers and our residents. Um, each year we will provide a report, it's called a local skills report, so there's one of these in Hertfordshire and as I said there's one of these in every region and you can have left the link for it there, but it is a really good snapshot of to give you that headline picture. Um, that there is the chapter, so every single region works along that same chapter, we all have the same structure in our local skills reports. So if anything I could, could link you to, guide you towards looking at um, chapter three, for example, which is our pointing there. I'm pointing at my screen. You can all see me pointing. Um, local context, because that gives you a really good overview of our economy, 
our particular strengths and weaknesses, our opportunities, our sectors, our places, our key demographics. So I could just link you signpost into that chapter, which will give you that really good overview of what's going on in Hertfordshire. But also within there, there is lots around our planning and our strategy and what each of our partners and stakeholders are doing in skills, um, talks about our progress as a county, um, how we're improving against some metrics such as um, destinations of, of um, our residents, of an unemployment. Um, so we have quite be we have benchmarks that we work towards every year, which we're always looking to improve. Um, and then also, if you really wanted to get into the data, you can see the Annex A at the bottom core indicators. And that is about 30 pages of raw data um, translated into trends and charts. So we look across all areas, looking at ONS and NOMIS and LMI for all. We have a really good database, um, which is profiling all the job vacancies out there, looking at all the skills that employers are asking for, looking at hard to fill vacancies. So it's profiling and, and it's tr trending all our data that we have in lots of different sections around our skill supply, skills demand, um, that sort of area. So it provides a lot of raw data and turns it into um, more readable charts for you. So if you are so inclined, uh, that is there for you to look. So that's our local skills report. So um, next slide, please, Steve. I, I'm not going to go into lots of data now because um, we, well, there is so much of it. But I wanted to headline some of the key areas. You're all probably very familiar with them, some of the challenges that we're facing. Because from the outside, Hertfordshire looks very affluent um, and our, our data is, and, and successful, and some of our data is showing that. So we've very, very high levels of residents um, at level four and above, really good performance in schools compared to other regions, really good um, progression as well, progression to higher education. We earn a lot, apparently. Uh, we earn 16% more than, than the national average so I think sometimes some of this data does us no favours. I think lots of you are hearing about levelling up, for example, and lots of money going towards regions. Well, actually, Hertfordshire is not getting much of that money because some of our data is well is showing that actually, well, actually, do they need that input? But actually, if you look into um, some of the data, there's lots and lots of levels of inequality that we're facing um, within our districts. Um, each district, district is very deaf different and I'll, I'll show you a dashboard that we've got that gives you live data which shows some of the differences we have between our districts and then even in districts between wards just just incredible changes of I'm in decorum and you'll see one ward which has got over 90 percent of young people going to higher education compared to the ward next door to it only 25 percent of people going to higher education so we have some real levels of inequality um, in our in our area um, we've got a real challenge with um, where we're situated and the exporting of highly skilled people. Lots of skilled residents are flowing out of um, Hertfordshire um, and we don't want that to happen. We want them to work for our local companies. Um, and that's why we've got such um, our residents earning so much more. But actually, if you look at the workplace residents, um, their salaries, that's much lower. So that just demonstrates that um, our residents are flowing out of the county. So yeah, just um, some of the key demographics and some of the challenges that we're facing in Hertfordshire that we really want to address in some of our careers education programmes to encourage our residents to work for our local employers. Um, we do a lot of work in, in understanding the, the needs of our employers. And it's quite tricky because a lot of the data you, you, you see, it's all historical data. And it's not the live data that employers are telling us. And it's really tricky to capture that information of what employers need a lot of it that softer skills that attitude that that what are the skills cuts where they're really struggling to recruit and data doesn't the data of such of ons and gnomis isn't telling us that so we do there's lots of national surveys that take place to capture this information we do local surveys as well but i would say this is an area that we really need to improve and i know the careers and enterprise company are looking at, at this too get how to extract a lot more of that information from employers about what they need, how can it influence curriculum, how can it influence the careers education landscape, how can it influence um, skills programmes. 
um, and recruitment. So we do have lots of information on employer skills needs, and I, but I think we need that's an area which we really need to improve and we're looking at. Um, so next slide. And uh, what? Oh, I thought that was me having an echo, but I think you've got the microphone off. But um, also, what the LEP do is, and what we're continuing to do, is a lot of in, um, analysis in some of our growth sectors and our future skills needs. Um, some of the areas we're looking at right at the moment is the digital side, um, what that means in terms of those digital skills, which is that career pathway, but also those digital skills that all of us need um, to be productive in the workplace. Um, lots and lots of talk at the moment and lots of actions will be taking place in terms of um, those skills needed within the green, um, the green jobs and uh, achieving net zero, huge amount of work to be done there. So you're going to be selling a lot of it in that area. We're doing work um, across our growth sectors. So I've talked about sustainable construction there, smart construction, but there's some sector action plans coming out for film and media, science and um, hospitality as well. I think one thing I would say, and one action to take away, is sign up to the LEP newsletter. Um, and because we have a brilliant newsletter that goes out um, monthly, and it's just telling you when all these things are happening. So it's just a really good news um, source, so you can keep up to date with what's available in Hertfordshire in terms of labour market information. Um, so next slide. Right. Um, so I've talked a lot about all the different. Um, data areas, all the different evidence, all the different work we're doing in terms of um, understanding our, our, our skills base and um, our employment base. And that all culminates in um, planning, really. All that data has to turn into actions and plans. And so we've just been through a process at the moment um, to um, revise and publish our updated skills and employment strategy. It's a really good time. Our last strategy um, was out of date, if you like, in 2020. And uh, we, we paused and didn't publish it straight away, of course, because we've been through such an upheaval with COVID. But actually doing this strategy was a really good opportunity for us to work um, across all of our stakeholders and partners to really come together to, um, OK, what does Harpsy need to do? to support our, our residents and our, our employers. So yeah, we've actually been through this process. So the Heart to Skills and Employment Strategy is on uh, the LEP website and we'll make sure you've got a copy um, of that. So it is all there to provide actions and plan to address local skills challenges and opportunities. Um, so next slide, please, Steve. Um, just to give you a bit of context into why we need a, a strategy. Um, it's, it's a document that we can all work from in, when we're doing our planning. So it's had, some, it's had some great successes over the years. It's been in place since 2015. And I'd say, not as a result of having the skills strategy, but certainly influenced huge amounts of investments into the county. So we've actually secured around 29 million pounds from European social funding. Um, and that's been spread across a huge amount of areas supporting um, young people into work, adults into work, learning programmes. Um, the community fund there, the big lottery as well, we've done lots of bids into that um, project. We've had investment for the careers and enterprise company and all the work we've done on careers education, uh, investment for HOP, which of course um, we'd, we'll talk about. And when we were writing bids and funding into central government, they want to see a skills and employment strategy. So we're all working towards a common goal and that's why it's really important that we have one in place because when we're all planning that we can go back and reflect on the skills employment strategy to make sure all our provision and our programs are meeting the needs of, of Hertfordshire. So that's why we've, we've got one and there are very important um, not only documents but living and breathing agendas really for us all to work towards. So yeah we've just republished ours so again take a look at that um, a bit of evening reading um, if you go on to the next slide, Steve. Um, yeah, so what we've done, we've ordered all of that evidence into um, five dominant themes. So within the skills strategy, you'll see actions across these five areas of our young people. Um, and so un unlocking talent and supporting young people into um, good, fulfilling careers. Um, 
a lot within our adults, of course, that's when they leave the education sector, a lot of area, a lot of work's going in into that side, retraining um, adults. Um, so a lot of in that area, employers, another huge impo important area, of course, and especially within our small um, and to medium sized businesses. So they're, they're the three sort of target groups, young people, adults and employers. Um, but within this strategy, we've put a lot more into how we're going to work to really harness what we've got within these amazing sectors we have in Hertfordshire. And then again, a lot more detail around our places. So looking at that levelling up agenda, looking at those inequalities, but also making the most of what brilliant um, place we are within um, England and the UK and where we are in terms of within London and what we have in film and media and science and sort of connecting our sectors and places together. So we have actions across all of that. Um, and across our skills and employment strategy, we've got a lot of work and we want to look at these three areas of cross-cutting themes, we're calling them. Um, so they're called, um, so foundations of good growth, that's another term you'll see a lot. So these foundations to, you know, what makes us successful in skills and employment. So we look at the diversity agenda, equality of opportunity agenda, um, digital, side which I've, I've spoken about and also how we're going to support a net zero future and of course at the bottom there we've got two um, other agendas and plans that we're working towards which is the COVID-19 recovery and we we need to do more work on here but the actual Im impact of the EU transition which we're all seeing um, certainly in terms of a very very tight labour market at the moment because we don't have access as much access at the moment to that EU labour market which is really causing some challenges um, so that's the skills and employment strategy. Um, what time am I on, Steve? Am I okay? How long, I, how long have I been going? Am I going 20 minutes? Yeah, you've got a decent amount of time if you want to do the yeah. um, go on to anything live or anything like that. Yeah, so I think the next five slides, um, Steve, are a bit more detail. Well, I've sort of talked over it on the five themes. Um, so this Theme is a very important um, theme. If, if, if just look at this side in terms of for the people on this on this um, call. So this is all the work that we're going to be doing across the county to support careers education. So you'll see different partners on this. So Hopch County Council actually lead on this. They have a, a strategy group which leads on um, the work um, across our emerging talent and support for young people aged 16 to 24. But also across there, you'll see lots of work in schools, the careers and enterprise company, the careers hubs, um, top department for work and pensions is also within this. Of course, FE and HE are part of this plan. So uh, yeah, that's a really important theme for you to look at and look at the actions and feedback as well. Um, it's always a continual process, our, our strategy and plan. So looking there, it has a lot of data in there, evidence in there in terms of the labour market and the world of work. So, but if, I think if we can probably um, skip the next four slides, which just gives a bit more detail there on um, the content within the five themes. Um, because I think I've just got till 10 past four and I wanted to show the... Um, the skills and employment dashboard. Um, one final slide there, I think, as 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 all of us as stakeholders in careers ed education, is to read the local skills report. That's the work of the skills advisory panel, and read the employment and skills strategy, and know that by referring to this strategy, we're all working towards that same goal. Um, and it would really it does really help with your careers education program because it's full of Hertfordshire and the, the, the really quite really good employment opportunities that we have within Hertfordshire and it's all in there so um yeah so I think the next slide now if I click on that that's not going to work I'm going to or does it work let's have a click and have a go no. I'll stop sharing no, it's, well. see, it's not it's, it's your it's not going to work it's your your sharing I'll stop sharing Caroline yeah. and then if you want to go on to to that or I can uh, yeah that's probably the easiest way if you go on your computer if that's okay yeah thought what I would do, let's see. What are you seeing now? Are you seeing resources for career leads? Yeah. Oh, good. So this one. Um, right, I just wanted to show you the skills and employment dashboard, which we've invested in. Uh, so we've got all the written reports. 
But actually, if you wanted some live data, we've um, developed this dashboard um, to enable you to pick out live data for your districts and for Hertfordshire as a whole. So this is on the LEP website. If you just uh, search skills and employment, you can see the, the file path there. It's also got links actually to our, our labour market reports and our skills and employment strategy. But this dashboard here is a, a live dashboard, which is accessing data. Um, it's connected in, if I just scroll down, all these different data sources. So out of work benefits, population estimates, job density, that's the amount of, um, the level of jobs per residence, which is interesting, that's interesting, job density, because the amount of jobs for residents at the moment is four times what it was pre-pandemic. It's really, it's a really, really tricky labour market for um, employers. And it just says where we're feeding lots and lots of different data, data sources, apprenticeships, the number of businesses in your area. So that says where all the data is coming from. But the, the clever data scientists, as you are, if any of your students are technical in any way, tell them to go into data science. <laughs> it's a huge, huge, huge area. Um, so in here, you can look at all the different areas. So out of work benefits. And then I can't see that. Your, ah, here you go. And then it breaks it down for Hertfordshire as a whole. So you can see for Hertfordshire, we've got uh, 3.8 of our economic active residents on um, claiming on claiming at the moment. And so we're doing we're doing well for East of England, which is the East patch, and we're doing considerably well against England as a whole. And then that this is where it shows some of the inequality across Hertfordshire in terms of, and it's, it's generally always the same, dominated um, usually higher claimant counts in Stevenage, Watford, and in Broxbourne, whereas you have three rivers, St Albans, Low. Um, I've just had a quick chat to our data team actually, because um, this trend over time period is, is not showing, as I just said, there's a glitch on the system, but this is really interesting to show because this has, absolutely slashed a year ago these were really really high these claimant counts up to 10 percent um, and higher so it shows people flocking back into work which is is positive there are some other challenges around that um because as i said there is a huge amount of vacancies to um number of residents applying for them so um but yeah you can go in here and go if i look at earnings for example this then splits down the earnings uh, per district. And this is where you can see we, we have an issue. So this is workplace earnings, what our employers on average are, what they're earning by the employers. But if you switch this to resident earnings, you should see it jump up. So the resident earnings are, are much, much higher. So this is just quite a good dashboard for you to um, access real, well, it's not live data, we're always usually about a year behind, but it's feeding all our main data sources. And you can, um, over these areas here, um, and you can compare through districts as well. So I wanted to show you that dashboard because that's just much more up to date. So you'd have to wait each year for the annual reports to come out. So shall I answer any more questions on the dashboard before I actually come out of that? Eric, take any general questions, Caroline, and any questions yeah. on this, and then we'll move on to Hop, if that's okay. Yeah. If anyone has any general questions, feel free to type something into the chat, or even better, um, turn your camera on and ask a question. Um, anyone, either an EC, a careers leader, or an enterprise advisor, please feel free to ask a question. So, did I come to the end? Have I come to the end of the skills and employment strategy bit, yes. Yeah, we'd we'll be going yeah. into the hot resources for the next probably 20 minutes, Caroline, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Shall I share screen on the on the hot resources? Oh, yeah. Someone's, someone's asked, oh, Shay's asked, does uh, yeah. the dashboard link to hot? No, that would be sensible. Yeah, there you go. Great suggestion, Shay. So actually we're having a conversation um, in the background, Steve and I were, on hop just before this about um having a section on hop there is a great section on hop which you'll find which is actually if i point there it says explore careers under there there's something called resources for career leaders so it's packed full of stuff in there for the careers leaders but actually we were looking at how we can sort out resources per gatsby benchmark 
Um, and so, for example, we're going to be doing that. So you can, instead of looking at all the resources as a whole, you can actually go to each benchmark and then look at the resources per benchmark. Um, yeah, so we will, for example, link the dashboard under Gap to be benchmark two. I'm just yeah. going to switch all the ones there. On two. Yeah, that'd be great. And I think, yeah. um, I think the careers leaders that um, are more likely to be on tomorrow's call some of them have asked around content around Gatsby Benchmarks to come on here. So you've kind of got the careers and enterprise company has got its own dashboard and it's national, but there'd definitely be a space for sharing of best practice in Hertfordshire. So the, the, the careers leaders on tonight's call and tomorrow's call, um, it, it could come to various, like you've mentioned, this could go on there, but then if we update any more resource posters or any more things come out around the skills framework or um, a school does a really good piece on how to use your alumni to promote labour market, you know, whatever it is, it can then go onto the HOP website under the right benchmark. So I think there's some great potential there. Uh, and with more and more careers leaders being aware of it and the employers that are on the call, um, wanting to to reach those early talent pipelines and those skill develop those skills, um, I think there could be some real potential for that section on HOP. So that's really exciting. Thank you, Caroline. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to talk a little bit about the careers directory and then um, moving into how you can use job profiles and things like that on HOP as LMI information? Is that all right, Caroline? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So. Finishing, we finished about the, the bigger picture and what the lab do in terms of all that data and evidence. And so the there are ideas of challenge as well, Steve, isn't it? it? It's how you translate that, that huge amount of information um, into uh, meaningful words and impactful words. And so we have, as you know, and I've talked, we've talked about HOP and it's been hopping around for about two years now and HOP's doing really well. Um, in terms of hits and usage, and uh, which is excellent. So um, we know it's a platform that's here to stay and we want to continually build it. Um, again, any any insight or any advice on that, keep on feeding in in terms of what, what, what would be good for you on HOP to support your careers education programme. But where HOP is really good, um, it is that it's um, a clever tool that the web developers have done, which is feeding at every point local information. So it feeds um, at the highest level, it feels jobs and, if, and, it, and it feeds um, qualifications and courses and it feeds apprenticeship vacancies. But it's also feeding a lot of labour market information and it enables us to be quite clever um, in terms of uh, trying to influence um, residents and young people when they're making their decisions. So for example, the careers directory here is a really, really, really good tool. So um, you'd search in here. So, you know, Steve talked about, what's it called? The career meter Yeah. It's a career meter isn't it? So HOP feeds the same data as that. Um, so um, we're not live on HOP now, but if you went into careers directory and then um, searched on nurses, for example, or um, me medicine or any of those areas, those job categories, it then lists all the jobs as part of that. And then if you actually go into a job, it lists the main tasks of that job, the average salary, it's exactly the same salaries because we're feeding LMI for all, which is Warwick University have done that. So we're feeding all the same data as careers meter. Um, and it tells you about what did, what did most people study in school and in higher education to get on that career path. Um, talks about growth of that job or decline of that job. So uh, the person can see whether that industry is growing or declining. And then what the brilliant thing is about HOP is that on every single one, there's about 450 pages of different jobs. Every single one of those then links to live feeds going across the bottom. So that's live jobs, live qualifications, um, FE qualifications usually, and live apprenticeship vacancies. And it just means a young person can then translate that job into live. OK, these are sort of jobs that I might be doing. Yeah, they're like for context as well. And it, yeah. gives them that, it gives them that carrot, doesn't it, Caroline? So yeah. If they're, they're not doing the best they possibly, you know, they're, they're, they're operating at a six out of 10 in school, but they start to read about that information. They maybe consider a work experience placement in that area or that that job really starts to interest them. Then hopefully that would translate into more effort in school to get the qualifications and the skills that they need. So, yeah, really interesting. And they can take that into a, 
a one-to-one -one careers guidance appointment, that information, or it can be pulled out in a careers guidance one-to-one um, -one as well if, if, if they're not at that point already. But I think this is a great landing spot for students before they go to a careers guidance appointment. So schools have quite a limited budget as to how many careers guidance days they can buy. So it would be great if they're introduced to HOP lower down the school, you know, year nine GCSE option time, whatever. And then when it comes to GCSE option selection, but also when it comes to that one-to-one -one that they're going to get with the careers advisor, they're not all going to do it, but some students would then be able to do a bit of pre-work so they get the most out of their careers guidance appointment. So this, this is so usable in this yeah. format. Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, so that's a really good way of how we're translating direct labour market information into jobs and careers. So go and explore that. That's really good. So next page. <coughs> and that's kind of just a, a little bit more of that, what you've just taken, Caroline. So that's the apprenticeship feed from yeah. when they've searched for something. That's just showing how the student could then click onto a, a role on that and apply or, or research it, depending on their age and their transition point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot. We've got, if you just search for labour market information on HOP, we've got a section on labour market information. So this is a really good video, actually, that the Local Enterprise Partnership did, maybe though, 2018, 2019. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing how fast time goes, but it absolutely needs updating. So I know I very much, I think Steve definitely um, will be updating uh, this video over 2022. Uh, My gosh, there's time going. <laughs> yes, but we have a lot of LMI. Um, so this is this is a really good video, actually. I really like it. It's got really catchy tune in the background. Um, so, um, yeah, and other, other things up there in the labour market information, like emerging jobs reports. So there's, there's lots of resources in there. Uh, this again, where we're just trying to turn labour market information into a lot more visual for a young person. So taking all that information and turning it into district infographics. Um, so these are really good in terms of, you know, um, main employers, large employment sectors, um, stats on average earnings and that kind of thing. Uh, so they're all on hop and available. And again, need an update. Really good now, but still we're going to be looking at updating those. And um, they're available. Um, Again, we did a lot of work on the HOP to skills framework. Again, that's that work and those surveys with the employers, what are, are employers looking for from workers and their staff. And uh, a lot of you, I know the schools are working with this, but we've got the HOP to skills framework, which is 10 areas, 12 areas of, of skills that um, a young person needs to be demonstrating or working towards as they're, as they're in school. And we've also got loads of resources as part of that HARP skills framework. So mapping exercises, reflection tools. Um, so lots of tools for you to use within careers education that the young people can um, use. Can I just uh, interject there as well, Caroline? So with, with the HARP skills framework, we've had some really innovative uses of it within Hertfordshire. So we've had sixth forms adopt it within their sixth form handbook so that their sixth form students are really focusing in on skills um, within PSHE, within careers, but also within whatever they're doing. So if they're in a lesson, what skills are they developing? If they're doing Duke of Edinburgh, what are they developing? If they're a captain in a sports team, what skills are they developing? But also um, it's been used pre and post work experience. So a student might audit their skills before they go on work experience in year 10 and draw out their strengths, their areas for development, but then they'll reflect back after they've been on work experience and seen that some have increased. We've also had some schools use it in their school reports. So you get your, your kind of how you're doing um, qualification wise and predicted grade wise in school, how you're doing for effort, attitude to learning, but then um, uh, how they're doing on skills and what's your strongest skills and what's your area of development for skills so we've had a few different schools adopt that um, which is which is amazing uh, and a great use of, of the resources um, this is one of those things where it came out a while ago but it's always just re-reminding people about it and then just like with everything it has a particular way of being used but then you open it out to the masses and people just think creatively in loads of other ways that it can be used i'm sure there'll be other people on the call that can come up with some other ideas of how to use that sorry to inter interrupt i think it's you now anyway steve is it you yeah yeah so you're doing these yeah <laughs> 
And then, yes, so virtual employer encounters. So this is some great labour market information that's really from the Hertfordshire horse's mouth. So Gareth sort of landed on this accidentally, probably during COVID in the first lockdown in March 2020. Um, but there's been a real appetite for employers um, on the call. There'll be men surprise advisors. There'll be employers on the call now who've got their own organisation involved in this um, or they're putting forward apprentices and things to talk on this. And then on the flip side of that, we'll have teachers and careers leaders on, on here that have been um, passing this information on on a weekly basis to their students to hear and find out about the local labour market through these virtual employer encounters. So started kind of by accident, but we're now up to 37 different sectors have been showcased and 37 different employers. So, and it's still growing. Um, we've, we've had everything from real in-depth how-tos on how to apply to medicine, through to how to become a physiotherapist, um, how to get into bricklaying, horticulture. Um, I think this week it might be how to become a town planner. So it's gone off in lots of exciting and different directions. It's great to be able to watch it live. It's great to be able to interact and ask the questions. But I think it's a great tool to use at other times of the year as well. So if work experience is about to happen or work experience hasn't been able to happen for some students, there's some real quality interaction here that they could find a sector or find a job that interests them and research it and watch it. Um, then they could go on to hop and research that job and to see how much they would earn and what skills they need or what qualifications they need, all from this kind of virtual employer encounter starting place. So I think this is kind of accidentally brilliant um, and has been replicated by some other careers and enterprise areas around the country, but Gareth was a very early adopter of it. And if you're an employer on the call and you've got times in the year when you're going to be re um, recruiting for apprentices, so let's say there's quite a common window between January and Easter, please get in touch with Gareth where you could talk about someone in your, um, in your company, about your sector, about your organisation, but then maybe hear from an apprentice or a graduate as well. And, and then students can ask them questions about how they got into it and that kind of thing. Um, in a similar mould, but really specific and really inspirational, um, we've got the Hertfordshire priority sectors. And I know Caroline's really keen to add a couple of other sectors into this box set. And I like the box set approach, a bit like Netflix, where you can have hop into science, hop into engineering, and then there will be extra new, new ones added to the box set over periods of time. But this is really inspirational videos shot by young people for young people from Elstree Screen Arts Academy. So they, they, they know their audience because they're that audience themselves and they're really engaging. And what they've done is they've done sort of seven, um, seven to ten minute videos where it's people that have gone to school in Hertfordshire or they've studied at university in Hertfordshire or done an apprenticeship. And they're now in those growth sectors. So they're able to to really talk about their journey. Some of them have gone via apprenticeships, some of them have gone by all different pathways to get to where they are. They give some great hints and tips on how to get into their sector. Um, and they're just really personable videos. Um, they link really well in things like National Apprenticeships Week and National Careers Week. And um, they can be used in tutor time. Um, but also again, when it comes to, to those transition periods, you can look at these to give students some ideas. If they go into a growth sector, particularly the ones that aren't maybe quite sure what they want to do, they could move up quite quickly and there'll be a lot of vacancies they can apply to. Um, so these are some great areas to sort of switch on to and to use these resources. They also link in really well with the HOP lesson plans. So there's six HOP lesson plans that have been developed and labour market information features quite heavily within these. So there is a, the first lesson is about labour market information. And the second lesson is about growth sectors and links back to the videos that I've just talked about. But it's also got hop into the right career for you, work experience, the hop skills framework that Caroline's already talked about, further and higher education. So this is real quality careers in the curriculum ready to use on the hop website, but also links to the labour market. So these are some fantastic resources that are free and ready to download. And they come with the PowerPoint slides, they come with a lesson plan, and they come with the worksheets for young people. 
So um, it'd be great to start getting some feedback, I think, Caroline, from people that have used them. Um, it, it's great to promote them and it's great to talk about them, but it would be lovely to come onto a session like this and have um, people saying how they've used them, um, what bits they think, which lesson they felt was best. Is there anything that could be added to the lessons that we haven't just quite hit right? Um, be great to get some feedback over time, I think, on those. Yeah. And then moving away from HOP, um, there are other, other resources out there as well. So I think this is quite a familiar area where teachers would know about bite-sized parents would students would so it's within their own kind of where they click for things naturally already you've got GCSE bite size and that's got inspirational videos on it it's got um, links to things like International Women's Day and and various different resources on there um, and other information around job profiles as well and then um, when it comes to students thinking about what do I enjoy, enjoy in school and how would that transfer into the workplace um, there's some great resources um, that Services for Young People have got, um, but there's also similar ones on prospects.ac.uk where you can look at something like English or PE or maths or science, and it will link that to the jobs that it relates to. So it gives a student, maybe if they're thinking about their GCSE options or they're thinking about their A-level choices, they can start thinking about, well, if I did a GCSE or I did an A-level in English and I'd put that with geography, what could that link to? What jobs would that um, lead me on to? So that's another great bit of labour market information. And they've got some posters linked to that as well, which is quite visual. Um, I've seen these up in careers guidance uh, rooms around Hertfordshire and in libraries and things like that. And then um, we've talked a little bit about the careers um, ometer, um, which is also through LMI for all. And this has got this interactive widget. Um, Debbie, who's on the call at the moment, and myself were in, uh, what school were we in, Debbie, on Monday? Don't know if she can hear me. We were, we were in a school on Monday, and they were using the LMI widget brilliantly on their careers page. Oh, it was Nobel School, I think it was, in Stevenage. And they've got this, this widget embedded into their careers website. So you can, as a parent or as a student or as a teacher, you can type in a job like nurse or teacher or engineer or whatever it is, and it will link into the pay. Um, it will link into if that's a growth sector, a declining sector, um, and then it will also link into average pay for the UK as well. So it's just a really interesting tool. And we know that a lot of students are motivated quite heavily by money when they're younger uh, and then maybe grow into to, to considering other things when they're a bit older. And yeah, we can, we can send some instructions on how to use that, Mark, um, or we might even be able to do a bit of a, a demo of it if, if we're able to. Caroline, would you be able to just to log on to either LMI for all or, or careers on it? And let's do just yeah. a really quick demo. I'll, I'll unshare my screen and we'll do that for a few minutes. I think it would be quite useful. And then as we come out of the resources, we're, we're going to start throwing things open to the floor. So if people have got any questions or they've got any examples of how they've used LMI or they've seen it being used in the schools they support. We'd love to hear some of that in a moment, but hand over to you, Caroline, to share your screen, if that's okay. Right, I think we um, put this onto hop somewhere, I remember as well. They'd give you the code to do it. Oh, there you go, embedding the widget, yeah. It was quite straightforward, even I, I'm not super techie, but I've gone, got so techie over the last few years having pop, but it was quite, they gave you the code, there you go. And you have to pop that into the web page. Um, but is this hit here? So yeah, that's it. Um, click to pick a job. Oh, here we go. So which we put engineer, civil engineer. So yeah, really quickly. What I'd quite like to show actually, because I think that should map across to Hopture Opportunities Portal. Can you see Hopture Opportunities Portal now? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, worth. Just, just, let me just go. I just would be interested to see if it is mapping. So, engineer. 
Sip engineer. Right. So we look at the career. Yeah. So annual pay forty one thousand. It's a growth <laughs> sector as well. And if you click on yeah. display UK average, it then averages it out towards the average UK pay on the right hand side as a comparison. And then each oh, time yeah. each time you press clear card, you could then research a different job. So you could research teacher. You could research something completely different, doctor, etc. And and that would come on the left hand side and on the right hand side keep the UK averages. Yeah, so it's saying, yeah, so that's a good a growth and high paying industry to go into. Um, so I'm interested to see if they, that match across, so this is the career strategy. Was that the same amount? 41,000. Oh, yeah, yeah so exactly. it is, it's the, same, it's the same data it's feeding. So, and then it goes into main tasks, qualifications, and it should have a list related courses, see the rate of job vacancies. Is there any, so there would be apprenticeships there. So there's no civil engineering apprenticeships, which doesn't surprise me actually, because that's usually at degree level, civil engineering. LMI, so, um, LMI for all is a, is, a, um, is a national perspective rather than a Hertfordshire perspective, isn't it, Caroline? Just to, yeah, so it's, it's hard, this isn't Hertfordshire specific information, this is UK specific information, yeah. whereas most of the other things we've covered have been Hertfordshire. While, while you've got um, hop open, Caroline, would you be able to just give like a, a one, well, let's say two or three minute speed tour of hop particularly for a careers leader or if you're an employer and you want to get there as an employer spotlight that'd be really good just to yeah. we've done some slide sharing but i know that it's great to see it live so people can know how to navigate with ease um there's a yeah when you're on zoom and you know when the the pictures of me are in the way of the of the scrolling bar <laughs> right hop okay so what and your feedback on this is always appreciated because there is so much information out there, isn't there? And it's just always ordering it. Um, so it's just that, so the user can use HOP efficiently. But what we've done is um, obviously we've got our homepage where you can search your jobs straight away on the first um, search bar, jobs and apprenticeships and courses. Um, but then all our headline information, we're trying to keep on um, the homepage. Um, so remember the hop is for everyone and that's sometimes part of the problem is that we're trying to be something for everyone um so that's so but we want to get into this this um embedded so a young person will start using it in school but actually hop is equally important and useful for them throughout their whole career if they live in Hertfordshire so if they need to retrain change jobs they would always go back to hop and, and look for that so it's how you order all that information um for the resident and employer to look at but we've got our, our menu structure across the top. Um, what we've done is um, try to pop everything that a careers leader might need and to, uh, to signpost on this, this menu option here, resources for careers leaders. Um, but we do have on careers, so if a young person or a resident is looking at it, it goes through this natural um, journey of work experience and decisions you make at 16, apprenticeships, higher education, and then employment and learning, that's when you're in employment and you want to continually learn. So, and then for employers, it's the same. So if an employer wants to offer work experience or T levels, which are coming around the corner, apprenticeships. Um, so, and e in each of these fields, there's hub pages, which we've got all the information in there. Um, and um, Steve mentioned our, our spotlight pages and our showcase pages. So for provider showcase. So when you're looking at FE and HE options, when they leave leaving school, um, we want to just showcase all the different options for our young people and all the different areas they can progress into. So each one of these pages, this is a quite a new one which has gone up, which is Elstree Screen Arts. It just gives the provider that opportunity to showcase why come and study with us. Um, what are our programmes? What are our apprenticeships? What's our higher education? So that's quite a good page to direct young people to in terms of options. Um, and again, our employer spotlight is quite a good page to direct people to, young people to. I'd say this is like a st standing still virtual work experience conference. So it's got some of our more high profile employers across the county. They're having spotlight pages where they can showcase their apprenticeship, their work experience, their graduate opportunities. Um, so you can see we're building this. So it's just, it's, it's forever there. And we keep the pages updated. 
And again, if we look at MVDA, for example, I know they're recruiting at the moment. This is where Hop again is really clever that we've got these lovely live feeds going across. So I'm hoping MVDA should have some nice apprenticeship programs which you can promote to all your, they're one of our high profile apprenticeship um, providers. Look at that. Really good. It's like gold dust degree apprenticeship programs um, available at um, MBDA at the moment. And again, they have their jobs as well. So they're really good opportunity. They're all for free as well, our employers. Um, so we're really supporting them with their recruitment. Um, but yeah, they're really good to direct people, young people to, if they're looking for work experience, you know, go on top and get them to explore those large employers who are there, the ones that are going to be taking on work experience and just employers generally, they can search for work experience. And then I would just, in terms of information, I'd always go to resources for careers leads. There's so much information on HOP, but we're just trying to collect it all and order it all in here. And we've just got some um, funding actually to just put a bit more resource into this. So we can just really make sure that this page is really good for you. So it's just, we've got the lesson plans there in one section, higher education in there one, in one section, apprenticeships, all the, all the information on apprenticeships in one section. So it's just one page I want to direct you to where you should find everything. Um, as I said, Steve and I are going to work with, our, with Matthew to do a um, Gatsby benchmark page where that's what you're working on. You look at one particular Gatsby benchmark, you'll, you'll go in, Look at Gatsby Benchmark 2 and in there we'll have all the different support and resources to help you meet that. So I would probably direct you to go to this part of POP um, to find anything for careers leaders. So there's still a lot on there as you can see. So that's absolutely brilliant, Caroline. Thank yeah. you. That's that's a great tool. And what, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sort of reflect back and sort of summarize a few of the resource things and ideas of how to use it. And then I'm really keen to um switch everything off and go to the guys on the call and hear from the enterprise coordinators that go around the schools how they've heard of any good Gatsby benchmarks being uh labor market work being done any careers leaders on the call um being able to tell us about how lmi is being used in their school or college um, any eas that have supported a school that have done lmi well um or as any of us that are on calls that are parents how we've had LMI presented to us maybe uh, by schools or by colleges. So when it comes to the labour market information, it can be used in careers lessons in PSHE, can be used in tutor time, um, it can help students prepare for work experience and set them on the way researching companies and careers for the future or before they're going on a, for a careers guidance appointment. Um, some really innovative use of LMI being used on school websites where you've got that widget embedded um, you've got links into LMI for all um, you've got links into the, the LMI video and the LMI posters. It's been used in some assemblies to whole year groups. Um, it's been in careers newsletters. Um, we've had some great schools using LMI in school trips. So as the school trips happening now that they're starting to come back, some of them, when the students are on the trip, they, they talk about the different jobs and the different labour market that they encounter on the trip, which I think is really exciting. Um, school um, show video loops at parents' evenings and videos around the school around labour market. Um, and then we've also got some really innovative use of social media with parents. So to present labour market information to parents particularly, um, we've had schools use their Twitter accounts or set up specific accounts around inspiration and labour market and things like that. So there's some great innovation out there and I'd love to hear from any of the guys on, on the call that, that have either done it or seen it or heard about it in any schools or to ask any more questions to Caroline or myself. I think just a lot of what you've said there, Steve, in terms of using uh, career, I can never pronounce that, careerometer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and using the HOP website, having that uh, linked on the school's website, using Gareth's videos, which are really incredibly useful. Um, I know lot, lots of students, certainly in my area, have uh, attended those live and also on playback. And um, some of the schools have held uh, sessions where a group of students that are interested in a particular 
um, topic have stayed behind and, and listened to the um, the HOP webinars, which is uh, listen to them live, which is, is great support for them. Thank you, Leslie. Debbie, I know you may or may not be able to come on to the call. Um, if you are able to come on, Debbie, can you remember any of the stuff that, that Bob was doing in Nobel? Because um, that was quite interesting. Yeah, he was, he'd linked a lot of um, the information into their school website. Um, and as you were saying earlier, um, people could go instantly for that information and sort of have access to it really there at hand. Thanks, Debbie. Um, has anybody got any questions about the resources we've talked about, any sharing of best practice or something that Caroline and I are keen to hear about? Is there anything that's missing or needs updating or adding? We're really keen to hear about what the appetite is for out there um, so that we're developing and creating the right resources as we, as we put resource into doing that over the next year or two. Jackie, have you got any ideas on that? You know what mine will be. <laughs> Sorry. I work with the special schools and obviously any data that we could get about sort of young people with learning difficulties or disabilities into employment, um, I think that would really make the special schools feel like that there was some data there for them as well, which I, I appreciate it's really difficult at this time. Um, but I manage a team of supported employment advisors. And we've had such a brilliant year of getting young people with learning difficulties into employment. I'm hoping that maybe next year there'll be some better figures coming out if, you know, from our experience, but just my, my usual, I'm sorry to say, thank you. Yeah, I think, like you say, things around in supported internships, supported apprenticeships, that kind of labour market information is really invaluable for students making the transitions, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, I was on a meeting with the heads of the special school today, and again, it was mentioned sort of um, how low young people with learning difficulties go into employment, and they might go to college, but then it's a what next after that, so... Um, they're as keen as we are to, to see some data around that. Jackie and Caroline, we've had a, a great question from Sam from Tesco saying, are there any resources to support transition on HOP? Because um, that could be something that, that's developed or added to, I suppose. Jackie or Caroline, are you aware of if there's anything on there at the moment? I think um, it's a big topic, that um, the transition. And I think, so for example, to spring into mind and that's the area on the employee skills framework and it's those skills that young people need to be considering uh, as they transition um so there, there is lots on there but i i guess we haven't labeled it under transitions into employment but there's a huge amount on there in terms of employment skills how to look for employment how to make that choice about which sort of career you're going to go into so it's kind of there steve i'd say yeah just these we're, not, sort of we're, not, we're not yeah I'm, I'm meeting with a number of careers leads from um a few special schools tomorrow working on their quality and careers award so i know that a few of those schools are working on transitions at the moment so i'll ask them about you know what they feel that they would like on hop about that to help other schools so i'll put that question to them tomorrow and come back to you yeah, thank you, Jackie. I'd also know that a lot of the special schools, some of them have trans transition workers because they have to start that transition work so early and so detailed um, that there could definitely be some framing of what's on there that, like Caroline says, but kind of just sort of making it a little bit easier for them to access that information by framing it just slightly differently or pulling a, a, a load of it together in one place. Great idea. And when we've done these uh, workshops before, and this might come up again tomorrow with some of the careers leaders I know that are attending tomorrow. There's always been that call for sharing information on HOP. And I think it's just great, Caroline, that we're stepping towards that with sharing Gatsby benchmark resources on HOP. And that, that that's kind of like a, something that could have huge potential and go off in loads of different information. So if people could go away and reflect today, maybe what they would like to see on HOP and any resources they would like us to develop sometimes sort of come in on a call in front of all these people is a bit intimidating but feel free to send us an email or a message um, around updating resources or creating new resources that would be great so 
the last couple of things for me, unless there's any extra questions, um, last couple of things for me are to promote some of the things we've got coming up next. So it's great that we're going to be able to have um, over the academic year a mixture of some virtual and some face-to-face -face networking sessions. Um, me, myself, I've definitely missed being able to rub shoulders with people that, that work in the same arena as myself uh, and hear information and share best practice to money amongst each other on tables or with peers in conversations over teas and coffees, etc. So what we're going to do a few times this academic year is we're going to run some district networking sessions. So we've got um, 6th of December, the well in Hatfield, Stevenage and North Hearts is going to take place at Computer Centre in Hatfield. And with all of these, if any of them are taking place, we will move them around the district. So the next ones will be in different parts of, of that district. We've got the Watford, Three Rivers and Hartsmere one on the 7th of December. That one will be on MS Teams, but hopefully the one after that will be face to face. Uh, Wednesday, the 8th of December, same time, 2.45 to 4, we've got St Albans and Decorum over MS Teams. And then Thursday the 9th, um, if any of you are based in schools or colleges or support schools and colleges in East Hearts, Broxbourne, we're going to be at Western Homes near Stansted, um, where we're going to be networking together. So it'd be great to see some of you attend some of those events. Uh, please ask your enterprise coordinator for any extra information on those. Um, and then the next equivalent of these workshops is Gatsby Benchmark 4, Careers in the Curriculum, um, where we'll be running that on the 10th of January and the 11th of January. Um, I already know there's a few people on this call, like Sam from Tesco's, who's helped, uh, Tesco's have helped develop some amazing Careers in the Curriculum resources, particularly around English. We've had other Hertfordshire employers develop them around maths, geography and other subjects. Um, and then I was also in a meeting with SEAL School yesterday and their enterprise advisor is a marketing specialist and they're going to create some English lessons around careers in marketing with a enterprise competition for, for the school to, to do. So it'd be great to have some of the guys that have created some resources come onto that call, but also hear from, from the schools how they're doing Gatsby Benchmark for when it comes to things like audits or using resources or using theme times of the year, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully see some of you guys face to face at some of the district meetings that are happening in venues and um, others of you virtually at the, at the ones in Watford, Free River, St Albans and Decorum. And then also uh, getting along to the Gatsby Benchmark 4 workshop. Hope as many of you that can join us. Um, we're, we're really, really pleased to see so many of you on the call tonight. Please do send us um, a little bit more information um, or ask us any more questions away from today or put forward any ideas of things you'd like developed. But thank you very much for your time and a massive, massive thank you to Caroline for giving up your time and giving us some great information. Lovely to see you guys and speak to you all again soon. Take care. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Caroline. Bye, everyone. Chris, if you don't mind stopping the recording, that'd be great. Thanks, Chris. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.